Hello, and welcome to this information video about the BC Arts Council's scholarship program. We at the BC Arts Council carry out our work on the land of Indigenous nations throughout what is colonially known as British Columbia. We are grateful for the continuing relationships with First Nations, Inuit, and Métis people in BC that develop through our work together. We offer respect and gratitude to the Lekwungen people, known today as the Songhees and Esquimalt nations, on whose ancestral lands we operate our main offices. We also want to acknowledge and thank the First Peoples Cultural Council, who we've partnered with for many years to deliver the Indigenous Arts programs, including their Indigenous Arts Scholarship and Mentorship Program. My name is Erin Macklem, and I'm the Outreach Coordinator for the BC Arts Council. I'm joined by my colleague, Anissa Paulson. Hello, everybody. My name is Anissa Paulson, and I am the Program Advisor for the Scholarship Program. You can get in touch with me by phone or email if you have any questions about the scholarship program after watching this presentation and reviewing the program guidelines and application preview. On this slide, you can see my direct contact information as well as the websites for the BC Arts Council and the First Peoples Cultural Council. In this presentation, we will go over the BC Arts Council, who we are and what we do, the scholarship program, including who can apply and how to apply, advice and tips for grant writing, the peer assessment process, other funding opportunities for students, and who to contact with different types of questions. The BC Arts Council is part of the BC government. We are a funding agency that supports arts and cultural activity in over 200 communities throughout BC. We are housed within the Ministry of Tourism, Arts, Culture, and Sport, and our ministry is led by the Honorable Lana Popham. We were established by an act of legislation in 1995 for the purposes of providing support for the arts and culture in British Columbia, for providing persons and organizations with the opportunity to participate in the arts and culture in British Columbia, and providing an open, accountable, and neutrally administered process for managing funds for British Columbia arts and culture. Basically, we're here to ensure that individual artists and arts and cultural organizations throughout the province are supported because we know how important the arts are to the health and well being of communities. The British Columbia Arts Council funds a wide range of activities, projects, organizations, and individuals. For example, we support community arts programming in rural and urban centers. We provide money to individual artists and arts and culture workers and arts and cultural practitioners to create new artistic work and develop their professional skills. We provide funding opportunities for professional performing arts companies, indigenous artists and cultural organizations, art galleries, local museums, festivals, and community arts organizations too. And of particular importance to you here today, each year we give out over 150 scholarship awards to students. We are committed to supporting and encouraging BC's future generation of artists and arts and culture workers. It's important to note that BC Arts Council staff, like Anissa and I, do not make the funding decisions about who receives funding through grant programs like scholarships. Instead, we use external assessors who review all of the grant applications. That way we can be sure to maintain the open accountable, accountable and neutral funding process mentioned in the Arts Council Act previously. We'll talk more about the peer assessment process later in this presentation. BC Arts Council also partners with other funding organizations and other arts and culture organizations to distribute funding, such as the First Peoples Cultural Council, which we mentioned earlier. The work we do is guided by our new foundation strategic plan and our extending foundations action plan. The strategic plan prioritizes sustainability and creative development of the arts and culture sector, increasing equity, diversity, and access throughout all of our programs and processes, support for indigenous arts and culture, and support for regional arts and community arts. The Extending Foundations Action Plan places reconciliation, equity, diversity, inclusion, and access at the center of all of our work. These detailed plans are available on our website, and we encourage you to read them as they offer valuable insight into the work we do and the programs we offer. In support of the Extending Foundations Action Plan, the BC Arts Council has also introduced an application assistance program. This program is for individuals who self-identify as deaf or having a disability. Patient assistance helps cover the costs of support services for registering in the online grant system and creating and submitting applications, 
or project updates or final reports for the BC Arts Council grant programs. You can find more information about the service on our website or contact Nicola Dunn, whose contact information is listed on this slide. Now we will offer specific information about the scholarship program. This year, the intake closes on Monday, May 1st, so submit your applications no later than 11.59 p.m. At midnight, the system will close and you will no longer be able to make changes or submit your application. The scholarship program is the oldest program of the BC Arts Council. This funding program is meant to support BC's future generation of artists, arts administrators, and artistic and cultural practitioners. We give grants of up to $6,000 per year to support full-time studies in the arts. So you can apply for uh, $3,000 per term for either summer 2023, fall 2023, or the winter spring 2024 term, up to a maximum of two terms or a maximum of $6,000 total. When considering if you should apply to this program, it's important to consider two things. Are you eligible to apply? And is your education or training eligible for support through this funding program? We will start with who can apply. So to be eligible, you must be at least 15 years old by the end of this year. You must be a Canadian citizen or permanent resident, and you also must be a BC resident who ordinarily resides in BC and who has done for, so for at least 12 months immediately prior to the application deadline of May 1st. However, if you are attending school currently outside of British Columbia, but normally reside in BC, that would be eligible. We have more information in our guidelines as well as on our website about determining your British Columbia residency, or feel free to call a program advisor to discuss your particular situation. In terms of the types of education and training that are supported by the scholarship program, you must be enrolled in or in the process of applying to a diploma, degree, or certificate program as a full-time student. Or you may also be enrolled in a pre-professional half-day dance program in combination with high school studies. I'd like to note that full-time enrollment is as defined by your school. So if you are successful in receiving a scholarship, you will be required to provide and submit to us an enrollment verification letter from your school's department or your school's registrar's office before we will release your um, grant payment. We accept applications from students enrolled full-time in a wide variety of programs, including creative writing, music, theater, visual arts, film, media arts, contemporary and traditional applied arts, carving, beading, and metal arts, as well as dance, museum studies, and so much more. The BC Arts Council is committed to supporting future generations of artists and those who will one day work in the arts and culture sector. So in an ideal world, we could support everyone who is pursuing studies in arts and culture. Unfortunately, we do not have enough money to meet the demand, so we have an application process or a competition to determine who will receive the available funding. We outline all of the steps to apply to the scholarship program, and we also provide you with some general grant writing advice that we hope will be helpful to you in this process. Uh, after you have determined you and your program of study are eligible and that you want to apply, you will need to do a bit of prep work before starting your actual application. So before you apply, uh, many of these steps and tips will apply to any grant you may write in the future. And I think the most important advice we can give to you today is to read the funding program guidelines and review the application preview. The PDF document of the guidelines and application preview are found on our website. The guidelines cover much of the information in this presentation, but it's a really good practice in general to review any funding guidelines before you apply. As well, we update our guidelines annually, so make sure you are referring to the most recent version as sometimes eligibility criteria can change from year to year. The guidelines will fully describe who and what can be funded. They will also tell you the, the, date, the deadline stated uh, this year, it's already, or it's um, May 1st this year. The guidelines will also list all the steps you need to take and the materials you need to prepare in order to apply. 
So once you make sure you are eligible and determine you want to apply, you need to create an account in our online grant system. So all applications must be submitted using our online grant system. For those who already have accounts in BC Arts Council's online system, just use your password to log back in and you will have access to the application. If this is your first time applying for a BC Arts Council grant, you will need to create an account in order to see the applic scholarship application. And this account can stay with you for as long as you continue to apply to our grants. All BC Arts Council grants are managed through our online system. So for those who do not yet have an account in our online system, this slide shows a screen capture of the registration page. You can note the red arrow pointing to the register here button. If you are planning to apply this year, I would recommend that you register as soon as possible. It can take up to five days to process new account requests and you won't be able to start your application until your account is approved and set up. So go to our website and follow the steps to set up your account. There's also a phone number on that web page uh, for assistance. It's located right under the register here button. Uh, I'd also like to note that the green arrow pointing to the ins instructions, um, which suggests that you add no reply at bcartscouncil.ca to your contacts or your safe list. Um, once your account is approved, you will get an automated sys uh, email from our system and just make sure that the notifications don't end up in your spam filter or junk folder. So it is helpful to add no reply at bcartscouncil.ca to your safe senders list when you are registering. So once you click on the uh, register now button, it will take you to a page that looks like this. Click on the top individual practitioner section and then that will take you to a page that looks like this. And at this point, you will fill in all of the mandatory fields. There are some sections, including the designated priority group section and the voluntary self-identification section that can be updated after you submit your registration. And we will talk more about those sections in a moment. If you already have an account, you'll need to make sure that your personal profile is up to date including your contact information. Uh, make sure that's current, your email address, your phone number, and your mailing address. We would hate to send a payment to an old address. Um, and also note there are two new sections in your personal profile that you'll need to complete before applying this year. As mentioned, one is the designated priority group section and the other is the voluntary self-identification section. And we'll explain these in the next two slides. So for the designated priority groups, the reason we're asking you to complete the designated priority group section is because the BC Arts Council has a new policy to support applicants who are part of these designated priority groups. We acknowledge that the work of the BC Arts Council has been influenced and shaped by colonial history and that past funding practices have been inequitable. We're working to address historic and current inequities and make our programs, processes, and language more accessible. As part of that work, we have a new designated priority groups policy. Our designated priority groups include applicants who self-identify in one or more of the groups listed here on this slide, those being Indigenous, so First Nations, Métis or Inuit, Deaf or Experienced Disability, Black or applicants of color, and applicants who are based in areas outside of Greater Vancouver and Victoria's Capital Region. To clarify, this policy does not mean we will automatically support applicants who self-identify as part of one of these groups. What it means is that funding priority may be given to applicants who self-identify as belonging to one or more of these priority groups in relation to how the applicants are assessed by the panel overall. Remember, the information that you provide in your personal profile is not shared with the assessors, but it can be taken into consideration as part of the final allocation of funds. More information about the designated priority groups, including frequently asked questions, can be found on our website. The other new section in the personal profile that we wanted to go over is called the voluntary self-identification section, circled in blue on this slide, and you'll see this is how it will appear in your individual profile. 
This section is different from the designated priority group section in that it is not used to identify applicants for priority funding. This section asks questions that are meant to help the BC Arts Council understand if our programs and processes are equitable, fair, and accessible to all people in British Columbia. Having a better understanding of our clients will help the BC Arts Council identify whether the programs we offer and the services that we offer are reaching a diverse and wide range of artists as intended. Uh, we want to be clear that this section asks for more detailed information if you wish to share it. Uh, all of this uh, section is optional. The information that you share in this section is not shared with the assessors and information you share in this section is not considered during the assessment process. If there's information that you're sharing as part of your voluntary self-identification section that you feel is also important for the assessors to know, you wanna make sure that you are including this information within your application as well. So moving out of the personal profile area and continuing on with the few other steps to take before you apply. So another important step to build into your process is to attend an information session or watch an information video. So congratulations, you've already completed that step. Information sessions are a great opportunity to more fully understand how the grant process works. Another great way to understand the granting process and to get your questions answered is simply to contact BC Arts Council program staff. So I work with a team of people and we are here to um, help applicants through the application process. We understand that it can sometimes be intimidating, but we don't want you to feel that way. And we welcome you to contact us at any time with your questions. Whether at the BC Arts Council or any other funding agency you may apply to in the future, I do encourage you to call and talk with a program advisor before applying. That said, we have to answer questions from often hundreds of applicants and have done uh, so we do hope that you have read the guidelines and have done your homework before calling and asking questions. When you call or email, be sure to tell us a little bit about yourself, your project if applicable, what you're planning to study or do. And another good piece of information to know and or ask program staff before applying is how your application will be assessed. So in other words, what is the criteria used to score applications? Who will be reading and reviewing your application after you submit it? And how are decisions made? And we will go over this, how this works at the BC Arts Council in a minute. Uh, lastly, you may want to ask program staff at the BC Arts Council or elsewhere uh, if they have any tips to share. Let them know it's maybe your first time applying, that you're really excited about the opportunity. You've read the guidelines, you understand the process, but you're curious if there is anything else that um, a, a, a program staff might share that could be helpful as you embark on this process. So as I mentioned above uh, or, or previously, um, another important step in the application process is to understand how your application will be assessed and how funding decisions are made. So it's important that you as an applicant understands what happens to your application once it's submitted. The assessment criteria that I mentioned earlier will tell you how your application will be scored or graded. And it's the tool that our assessment panel will use when evaluating your application against all others. So the BC Arts Council always outlines our assessment criteria in the guidelines. And one of the reasons it's important to understand these criteria is because it's weighted. So you will see where you might want to focus your efforts if you have limited time. It's also important to understand that the assessors, what the assessors are looking for when reviewing your application. And it goes back to that um, previous slide that asked, you know, why should you apply? The criteria can be a helpful tool for you as well to know how to make your case to the assessors. So in this slide, you will see how your application will be assessed and scored in our scholarship program. Again, this assessment criteria is outlined in detail in the guidelines, but generally it's weighted 50% uh, for artistic work and 50% for the in the impact category. So now that you understand the grant process and the steps required to prepare to apply, it's time to get to work on your application. Applicants are responsible for submitting the complete application. 
So unfortunately, program advisors are not able to contact applicants if there is missing information or if your artistic samples do not work. So all eligible applications are assessed as submitted. A complete application must include information about your program and how it relates to your artistic goals and development. And note that as you write your application, you are writing about your upcoming year of study. So for, as I stated before, the summer 2023, fall 2023 term, and or next spring winter 2024 term. You'll also be asked for an artist statement and asked to describe your creative process, your vision, and passion. And you can think about an artist statement as essentially answering these three questions. Why me? Why now? And why this activity? In your artist statement, you will need to talk about yourself, your goals, and your accomplishments in a clear way. As part of this process, you will need to make a strong case for why the BC Arts Council funding should support you and why this arts training is important for your development now at this moment, particular moment in time. And also you will need to uh, clearly articulate why this particular training program will help you meet your learning goals and support your future career. As part of our commitment to accessibility, you do have two options for submitting your artist statement within this year's application. You are uh, expected to select only one option for submitting your artist statement. So option one is to um, write your answer in the text box, text box in the online application. Option two is to upload a verbal or sign language artist statement. If you choose to upload a verbal or sign language artist statement recording, your answer must be no longer than five minutes total, and your submission must only record your verbal answer to the artist statement question. Do not add any additional sound, design, or production features, please. ASL or sign language submissions may be uploaded as video content, and all of these directions are also explained um, and outlined in the online application as well. Uh, in addition, as part of your application, you will also need a resume or a CV, which you should upload as a PDF document, and it should be a maximum of two pages total. So your resume or your CV should detail your education and training history, any achievements or awards you may have received, uh, such as recent exhibitions, performances, publications, and then also be sure to outline any community or volunteer involvement that may be re relevant to your artistic practice. This is not a time to be shy or modest. This is a time to shine and to share the information that will be helpful in making your case to the assessors. Just let them know how awesome you are. And lastly, what you will need as part of your application are artistic samples that illustrate your artistic work. So artistic samples are required for all applicants and the requirements are slightly different for each discipline or field of practice. So once again, refer to the guidelines and uh, particularly the appendix in the guidelines, because there is a detailed list of what is required for your specific field of practice. And then if you have any questions, definitely feel free to reach out. If you think back to the assessment criteria, you, you are going to want to choose artistic samples that are your strongest work and that best demonstrate your artistic abilities and potential to the assessment panel. So together with the samples you include, you will also see in the online application that there is an inventory chart for you to complete. And you should use this chart to briefly describe the samples you have uploaded to your application. This is a space for you to provide additional context uh, that may be helpful to the assessors to understand the pieces that you are submitting. So things like uh, captions for any photographs that you might include or dimensions of your artwork or role in any collaborative pieces or work that you may have participated in. I'd also like to just note that uh, reference letters are not required as part of the application this year. So here are a few more pieces of advice for you as you think about the artistic samples. So first of all, understand what you're required to submit. Again, you can look in the appendix in the guidelines for the, uh, for the directions for the type and the number of materials you are uh, suggested to submit for your field of practice. Do not submit any extra samples as they will not be forwarded for assessment. Uh, it's always very helpful to test your materials before submitting your application, just to make sure your images are clear and your videos are working properly. 
we highly advise that you do not use a Dropbox and that you do not upload large files. Sometimes those can be really tricky for assessors to, um, uh, to access. Again, make sure you are using the inventory to clearly describe your work so the assessors have some context to understand what it is. And then lastly, consider your artistic samples to your written statements and consider the full package of how you are presenting yourself and your work to the assessors. Assessors sometimes have over 80 applications to read at one time. So put yourself in their shoes, make it easy for them to do their work. Um, if you have a video that you're uploading and you only want to identify a certain portion of that video that the assessors should watch, use the time code area in the inventory chart to draw their attention to that particular part of the video. If you do not specify time codes within the inventory, the first eight minutes of your video will be reviewed. And some final pieces of advice for this process are to prepare your application and select your artistic samples carefully and in advance. I know it's hard, you are all busy students, but I highly recommend that you do not wait until the last minute to begin your application. So start a draft application early. Explore the application and understand what information is required. Start a rough draft. Don't worry about being fancy with your words or description or your ideas. Just get some thoughts down. You have the ability to save your drafts in the online system. So just make sure uh, that you go back to the same draft application in the system, which will show up on your profile page. It's not necessary to create a new draft each time. Then just go back and look at your draft with fresh eyes and continue to edit and keeping the assessment criteria in mind as you go. Another piece of advice is just make sure you're answering the questions and be clear about why you are a great candidate. Be clear, succinct, and complete. There is a maximum word count for certain uh, answer sections. Do not feel obligated to use all the word count, but also don't write too little. Again, you'll just want to make sure you're making a really strong case to the assessment panel for why you are a great candidate. Be as specific as possible about who you are, what you are doing, why you are doing it, and also speak to your dedication and commitment to your artistic practice. And think about and describe the things that set you apart from all other applicants. It's also important to proofread your application before you submit it. If you have time and a good friend, ask your friend to read through your application. You can also ask your friend to score your application against the assessment criteria and see how you do. What areas are you strong in? Are there any areas you might need to expand upon? You do, do not want to leave any questions for the assessors. And then plan to submit at least one or two days in advance of the deadline. This is mostly to avoid potential for technical difficulties. Um, although the, the deadline you have until 11.59 p.m. on Monday, May 1st to submit your application, please note that our staff is only available to help troubleshoot technical difficulties during office hours. So again, we encourage you to not, not let it go to that last minute. And it does feel so good to submit it early and have it done. Trust me, you will love that feeling. Um, I'd also like to just quickly point out that applicants under the age of 19 do require parental or guardian consent in order to apply. And then finally, uh, submit and good luck. So your application has been submitted. Now what? Your application will be assessed against other applications from the same field of practice using the assessment criteria that Anissa described earlier and that are outlined in the guidelines. The BC Arts Council staff, as we mentioned, do not assess the applications. Instead, we invite three or four assessors to review all of the applications from a specific discipline. In choosing these assessors, the BC Arts Council looks for a mix of broad professional knowledge, expertise, geographical representation throughout the province, and varied cultural viewpoints. The assessors receive applications and portfolio materials through the online system. They read and evaluate each application as you have submitted it, and they score all the applications individually. 
they use the assessment criteria uh, that are outlined in the guidelines. The strong applications are those that make a strong case for themselves and score high in each of the areas of assessment. Then the assessors come together as a group and discuss all of the applications. They determine the final ranking order list of who will receive scholarships. The money we have available never goes as far down the list as they want. Sometimes you can be really close to the line and not get funding. Please don't give up. So once the assessment panel has made their decision, um, the results will go out by email only. And you can express, expect this email to arrive in mid to late August. If successful, you will be required to provide proof of full-time registration in order for us to release your grant payment. And instructions will be included in your email notification. Uh, applicants are welcome to request feedback on their applications. And at the BC Arts Council, we give verbal feedback from the assessment panel. And sometimes this can be really helpful with you as you, for you, as you prepare for future applications. Remember the assessors want you to succeed. They generally, genuinely want to support your arts training. So their feedback is meant to be useful. Keep in mind that sometimes there isn't anything wrong with your application. It can simply be the case that the money just didn't go far enough down the list. Also keep in mind that you are able to apply again in the future if you are successful and also if you are not. The competition does change from year to year. And as long as you are still eligible and registered as a full-time student and meet any other eligibility criteria, you are welcome to apply. This concludes the information uh, specific to the scholarship program. We did briefly want to mention some other programs that we offer, including the Early Career Development Program and the Professional Development Program, as well as Individual Arts Awards, which you might want to keep in mind for the future. You could find out information about all of these programs on our website. Uh, please reach out to Anissa if you have any questions specific to the scholarship program or reach out to our administration team if you have any questions about registering for or accessing your online profiles. Thank you so much for watching this video and we hope you found it helpful. Thank you.